I don't it'll just record on that. So you say this right? is trying to look like Welcome this evening to Hillbilly Reunion. So glad that all of you made it out tonight. It turned out beautiful. Boy, this afternoon those poor children had a walk here in the rain. I felt so bad for them. They were just drenched. But they loved it. Oh my goodness, they loved it. And I see a lot of them here tonight because they loved it. Yeah. Okay. Oh. At this time, I'm going to have my nine seniors come on out. I'm going to introduce them in order of appearance uh, on stage. First is Katie Winkler. Woo! Dan Stebrel. Kim Stebrel. Sawyer Schmitz. Hannah Muck. JC Guyman and Sam Swachek. I've had most of these nine young uh, individuals for the last four years. So I wish them well in their future. I know they're going to go far. We got you a corsage. <laughs> for, putting up with us. for putting up with you? Yeah. Uh, um, sure, you can put it on. You're shaking me off. I am. Don't stick me. <laughs> Seniors, I want to thank all of my cast. They worked really hard over the last two months perfecting their character, and I think we've had a lot of fun with this play. It's been, it's, it's been fun. And they did really well at learning their lines, and it's just, I really appreciate them. I'm proud of them. And with that, break a leg, guys. <laughs> recognize Crazy 8 Productions. You'll notice the set behind us was designed, painted, accessorized by them, and without their creative input and talent, the set would not look as amazing as it does. So thank you to Crazy 8 Productions. I do appreciate it. And just one last thing, if you have a cell phone, if you could just turn it off, please, or put it on vibrate, I would appreciate it. We are recording the performance tonight. So, thank you again for coming. I'm not paying him to like it. I'm paying him to finish the job. 
job. That's what I'm trying to do, Miss Seabury. But I can't finish the job if you keep telling me to stop. We're already falling behind. What? I said we're falling behind. You mustn't fall behind. The Blue Room must be ready for Princess Anne's reception. Then please stop interfering. Even the carpenters are complaining. How dare you speak to me that way? You? You? Painter. Yes, thank you. Painter. Let me handle this, Joey. You get back to work. She's all yours. You're welcome to her. Did you hear that, Miss Fontaine? So rude. It's a sign of the times. It's hard for a woman of my social standing to get the respect she deserves. Look, we're all under a bit of stress here. I'll try to keep the noise down to a minimum. I'd appreciate that. I have such sensitive nerves. You're asking, Mrs. Seabury. I've, no, changed, I've changed my mind. I don't want it. Very good, Mrs. Seabury. <laughs> There's nothing to worry about. The bloom will be ready. You mean, you haven't forgotten about the new carpet and the new trimming and the new curtains and the chandelier and the new mirror? Leave everything to me. Are you sure you, Princess Anne, will find the blue room stunning? A room to stun a princess. <sighs> After all, a princess doesn't come to Whitley Heights every day. No, she doesn't. The reception will be memorable. It will be the toast of Whitley Heights. The envy of all of my friends. Excellent. You're such a comfort. Mr. Seabury says he'll be leaving shortly. Who? Your husband. Oh, him. Miss Fontaine, I don't believe you've met Miss Reed. No, I haven't. I've commissioned her to write a history on the Seabury family. Nice to meet you, Miss Fontaine. I've seen some of your work. Lovely. Thank you. I've been reassuring Mrs. Seabury here that the blue room will be finished in plenty of time. Here's the painting you wanted, Mrs. Seabury. Ah, one of my husband's ancestors, Admiral Josiah Seabury. Revolutionary War, a hero. In the blue room? Yes, I want all the family portraits on display for Princess Anne. They belong in a regal setting. Yes, Mrs. Seabury, a regal setting. Have I ever told you, Miss Reed, I suspect I have royal blood? I had better write that down. It might do for a chapter. Charlotte, must you climb over the furniture? It looks so calm. Hi, Carol. Hi, Lois. Hi, Charlotte. Hello, Charlotte. Momsie, you wouldn't believe how jealous my sorority sisters are. They're green with envy about Princess Anne. If looks could kill, I'd be six feet under. There's something I meant to clarify, Mrs. Seabury. You met Princess Anne for the first time while in London? Yes, a friend of mine invited her over for sponge cake and a cup of tea, and wonders of wonders, she showed up. And Momsie invited her to visit Whitley Heights if she ever came to Los Angeles. Naturally, I never expected her to take the invitation seriously. But she did. Princesses are so gracious. If you'll excuse me, Miss Seaver, but there's still a lot of work to be done. Don't let me detain you, but do keep the noise down. I'll do my best. Let me see. So far we have two admirals, three generals, several mayors. Momsy says we're one of the most distinguished families in America. You mustn't boast, Charlotte. It sounds conceited. We don't want to give Miss Reed the wrong impression. <laughs> we are proud of our lineage, not conceited. If you say so, Momsy. I think I'll have a cup of tea and go over my notes. Miss Reed. Yes, Mrs. Seabury. How many copies should I have printed? That's up to the individual family. Usually it's three to five hundred copies. Oh, that won't nearly be enough. Five thousand at least. Five thousand? What do you think, Charlotte? Sounds reasonable. I want to give a copy to every girl in my sorority, nationwide. And I want to give copies to all of my friends, acquaintances, and admirers as well as to all the leading universities, senators, and congressmen. You're paying for Mrs. Seabury. What's money to me? You <coughs> might as well be confetti. Daddy says you spend too much money. Oh, what do businessmen know about money? By the way, Precious, must you be so familiar with the hired help? You call Miss Reed Carroll and Miss Fontaine Lois. It isn't dignified. Remember who you are. You are a Seabury. Never forget that. Whatever you say, Momsy. Where's my briefcase, Miss Claypool? I have it right here, sir, and your hat. 
I'm leaving you in charge of anything, with everything. If anything needs to be dealt with, you deal with it. Yes, sir, Charles. I'll only be gone for a few days. Yes, sir, Charles. Those people from the Internal Revenue Service show up. Try to put them off. Yes, sir, Charles. Why are you yelling, Josephine? It's the only way I can get your attention. Don't sulk. I've got a lot on my mind. What about my mind? What about your mind? Honestly, means the reception. Reception? What reception? What reception? Have you lost your senses? Your wife means reception to Princess Anne. I'll be back in plenty of time. You'd better be, otherwise I'll never forgive you. You know I hate receptions. That's not the point. The blue room will look splendid. The redecoration may cost a fortune, but it will be worth every penny. I've told you before, Josephine, you spend too much money. A woman in my social position has to. It's expected. Momsy says we should have 5,000 copies of the family history printed. 5,000 copies? Another fortune. Money doesn't grow on trees. It does if you have a money tree. I'm no money tree. Oh, don't talk rubbish. You don't look well, Charles, and you haven't looked well for some time. Anything wrong? There's nothing the matter with me. Why are you wearing a top coat, Daddy? It's a lovely day outside. It won't be in Canada. Canada? I thought you were going to Chicago. Canada. Toronto. The limo's outside, sir. You don't want to miss your plane. Yes, yes. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, Daddy. Charles, aren't you forgetting something? What is it now? Your briefcase, sir. Don't want to forget that. Charles, that is not what I meant. Well, what did you mean? Kiss, kiss. Oh, for goodness sakes. Here, catch. <laughs> there is one thing I forgot. You remember my relatives from the hills, the Hollies? Distant relatives, but not distant enough. You made us visit them last year when we drove across country. It was a horrible experience, Daddy. They were so uncouth, so rustic, so uncivilized. Which is another way of saying they're down to earth. I put the whole experience out of my mind. They're nice people. They're coming for a visit. <sighs> Read them the postcard, Miss Claypool. The printing's too small for me without my glasses. Yes, sir. It says it was mailed from some place called Happy Hollow. Happy Hollow? But I'd never hear the name of that miserable hamlet again. They didn't even have television in Happy Hollow. Dear Cousin Chicory. They call me Chicory. Howdy, we reckon you didn't expect to hear from us. Remember you said if and we ever got to the big city, we should give you a kinfolk visit. Kinfolk? How <coughs> appalling. What do they mean by a visit? Don't be surprised if in one of these days we drop in for a nice long stay. I'll cook you up a delicious pot of roadkill. Roadkill? How loathsome. I think I'm going to be sick on the carpet. Don't you dare, Charlotte. It's signed Graham Holly. Graham? Graham. Yes, Graham. Graham Holly. They can't be serious about a visit. What would the neighbors say? We'd have to close up the house. I wouldn't worry about it. Hill people don't leave Happy Hall. And besides, the Hollies are as poor as church mice. They probably couldn't even afford a bus ticket. Then why did they send that wretched postcard? Graham's getting on in years. I suspect this is her way of keeping in touch. I would appreciate it, Miss Claypool, if you didn't mention that tattered postcard to anyone. They might misunderstand. I won't say a word to anyone. Talk about a black sheep. Ba ba ba. That's not amusing, Charlotte. Sorry, Daddy. The limo, you must hurry, sir. He'll be right there. Goodbye, Charlotte. Goodbye, Daddy. Goodbye, Josephine. Bye, Chickory. Goodbye, Miss Foypool. Goodbye, sir. Lots of luck in Canada. Thanks. I'll need it. If you'll excuse me. Miss Claypool? <coughs> yes, Mrs. Seabury? That postcard destroyed. You don't want to keep it? We'd sooner keep a dead possum in the house. Isn't this the limit? The absolute limit. Remember that boy who got his exercise by pretending he was an alligator? What was his name? Bubba. And his brother? Clem. And Graham Holly's granddaughter? It was Cindy Lou, wasn't it? It was. And don't forget that orphan girl that kept hiding in strange places. Alice. It's ghastly. We remember too much. It was a grotesque experience. What if Miss Reed found out about the Hollies? She must never find out about the Hollies. As far as we're concerned, the Hollies of Happy Hollow don't exist. Mum's the word. Yes, Mumsy. We're ready to paint the ceiling. Miss Fontaine wants you to take a look. Hello, Miss Charlotte. Hello, Joe. Tell Miss Fontaine I'll be along shortly. You're the boss. That right there, Charlotte, is a perfect example of what I don't want you to do. You just called that workman Joe. That's his name. His name doesn't matter. Sorry, Mumsy. Miss Siegfried Reinhaber III. I wonder what she 
she wants. Oh, she might hear it. Miss Reinhardt, what a delightful surprise. Tea, Lester. Yes, Mrs. Seabury. I just got back into town from South America and found your invitation to tea with Princess Anne waiting for me. You scored the social coup of the season. I'm possibly puce with admiration. Hello, Charlotte. Hello, Mrs. Reinhardt. <laughs> Oops, <laughs> tennis racket. How amusing. Sorry. I must know how you met the princess. We've been friends for years. Aren't you a sly vixen? Never saying a word. I still have to ask you, my dear. Ask me what? Will you be wearing it? It. Come, come, don't play games with me. Your famous jewel, the Star of Iceland. Oh, I'll be wearing it. How thrilling. The Star of Iceland and Princess Anne? And if Mousy's having the blue room, completely redecorated. The Star of Iceland and Princess Anne? And the blue room, completely redecorated? Yes. Takes one's breath away. <coughs> you know, Josephine. I've never seen the Star of Iceland. I suppose it would be too much to ask a little peek. You know how I love jewels. I wanted to ask you a question about Governor Seabury. Sorry, didn't mean to intrude. Do stay, Miss Reed. This might interest you. Miss Claypool? This is Miss Reed. She's writing our family history. Fabulous. Mousy's going to show Mrs. Reinharbor the Star of Iceland. I didn't expect to see it until the reception. Yes, Mrs. Seabury? I would like to show Miss Reinharbor and Miss Reed the Star of Iceland. Go get it from the wall safe. At once. Goodness, you mean to say that woman has the combination to your safe? I trust my husband's secretary implicitly. She's indispensable. But a stone of that worth? It's heavily insured. But it's irreplaceable. Pish posh. Perhaps you'll write my family history someday, Miss Reed. Writing family histories is my job. I'd be delighted to. I suspect I have royal blood. From where? From wherever such blood comes from. <laughs> Beg pardon, Mrs. Seabury. Yes, Lester, what is it? The tea. English breakfast or orange pico? Pico. Yes, Mrs. Seabury. Here it is, Mrs. Seabury. Ladies, there's not another stone like it in the world. The Star of Iceland. Brilliant. Hurts my eyes to look. But I wouldn't get to have it. Like burning ice. Wow, that's some rock. What are you doing in here? You gotta exchange this ladder for one in the garden. You don't have to come through here to do that. Sorry. I should hope so. Help these days is impossible. Joe didn't mean any harm. Charlotte, remember who you are. Sorry, Mumsy. How many carrots? You mean for the reception? Speak to the cook. I mean the star of Iceland, the unit weight. Oh, Miss Claypool can fill you in on the minor details. I'd hardly call the unit weight of the star of Iceland a minor detail. I'm afraid we're out of orange because. Then serve English breakfast. Yes, Mrs. Seabury. <laughs> Since we received news of Princess Anne's trip to Los Angeles, this mansion has gone to sea. I am so embarrassed, I don't know how to apologize. There's no need to apologize. I don't like tea anyway. It upsets my stomach. The ceiling, Miss Seabury. Oh, I've forgotten about the ceiling. Coming, Miss Fontaine. Thank you, pardon, Mrs. Seabury. Yes, Victoria? There are some strange-looking people at the door. Strange-looking people? We don't know any strange-looking people. They say they're expected. Expected? Oh no. It couldn't be.
Jason, on account of we want to make sure it got here. Obviously, you spared no expense. What's that mean, Bubba? Expense? Well, I reckon it means a stretch of road. No, no. That's expense. That's what Cindy Lou was trying to tell you. We spared no expense. <laughs> Unfortunately, Charles. Chicory! If you insist, Chicory. Unfortunately, Chicory isn't here. Where is Cousin Chicory? Zoom! 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 I see Alice hasn't changed much. Alice is my peculiar. You're telling me. Chicory is in Canada. Why don't you go to Canada? I know he'll be delighted to see you. Is Canada anywhere near Disneyland? Practically across the street. When is Chicory getting back? He won't be back for weeks and weeks. We'll wait. We ain't got nothing else to do. Oh. <laughs> you gals are ailing? I can whip you up a pot of mountain medicine faster than you can say fussing at a few. It's probably the same pot she cooks skunk in. <laughs> we're we're going to have a reception for a dear friend from England. If you go to Canada, I'll pay for the tickets. We ain't no hurry. I want to get to meet all the beautiful people in Los Angeles. There aren't any this time of year. They've all gone to Canada. <laughs> you say you came by plane? Yep. 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 Cross the sky. Like me with turkey buzzards. <laughs> First time. <laughs> they even give us free medals. How did you pay for the tickets? Credit cards. Credit cards? She'd be a neighbor. Say, credit cards is the same as money. So we got to the airport and Matilda Quill was right. Funny kind of money. Ain't same as having a jar full of credit cards. Eyes likes coins. Coins make noise when you drop them in. Clank, clank. Isn't that interesting? How about a hotel? What a splendid idea, Charlotte. Bubba and Clint can go to the YMCA and Graham Conley. Cindy Lou and Alice can, go, can all go to the YWCA. Them's funny names for hotels. I don't think Daddy would appreciate that. You're right. Mustn't upset Charles. Chicory! How about a motel? What's a motel? I figure it's a hotel that moves. <laughs> Ain't that something? They got everything in Los Angeles. I figure we'll bunk down right here in Cousin Chickory's cabin. This ain't no cabin, Graham. It's a mansion. What do you know about that? It's a mansion. <laughs> ain't that so? Sure is. <laughs> zoom, zoom, zoom. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Oh, have rooms prepared. We ain't particular. Sleep on the floor. And probably have. Glenn, <laughs> let's see how the hunting and fishing is in these here parks. Yeah, I saw a swamp outside. That's not a swamp. It's a swimming pool. Oh, there's some bullfrogs. I doubt some bullfrogs. <laughs> Doubts. Foreign gold Clemson. Toss me that old pole cat. I'll make a casserole. <laughs> oh, no. Charlotte, child, where's the stove? I'll show you. I hope you got plenty of wood for the fire. I wouldn't know about that. What are you waiting for, Bubba? Ready when you are, Clem. <laughs> What's in there, Cousin Josephine? Why is all them folks is working? It's the largest sitting room in the mansion. I'm having it redecorated at great expense. Could I have a looky? If you wish, but try to stay out of the way. The workmen are very busy. They won't know I'm there, but I will. You rang, Mrs. Seabury? Yes, we'll be having some people stay over for a while. I think the rooms in the east wing under the eaves will do. Those rooms aren't fit for guests, Mrs. Seabury. The wallpaper is starting to peel. Well, they're not guests exactly. Not guests. There, there, they're, they're caterers. Yes, that's what they are, 
caterers. My husband hired them. For the reception. Yes, they've come a long way. <coughs> Go see who that is. Yes, Mrs. Seabury. Will you sign these invoices, Mrs. Seabury? Later. What hotel is my husband staying at in Toronto? The Prince William. Zoom, zoom, zoom! We're going down! Run that! We're going down! Who was that? I didn't see anyone. <laughs> <laughs> the ceiling, Miss Seabury. I don't want to go on any further without your approval. I know. I'm coming, Miss Fontaine. Oh. Yes, Lester. A hey, Miss Luke. Then you can deal with it. I have more important things to worry about. You may come in, Miss Lou. Thank you. We put up our facts, Miss Lou. Hi, Miss Claypool. Mr. Seabury's secretary? Personal and private. Won't you sit down? You're most kind. Sometimes when I visit, people want to hit me with a chair. That must be nerve wracking. Nobody likes a tax collector. Mr. Seabury's in Canada. I'm authorized to speak for him. Quite frankly, Mr. Seabury's financial affairs are in something of a mess. He's far behind on his payments. We're more than eager to work out some arrangements. You have all his records, I presume? I think you'll find everything in order. Taxes must be paid. Mr. Seabury has every intention of paying them. The sooner the better. Interest fees compound daily. Wait till you meet, Graham! Look, little lady, I've got work to do. My name's Cindy Lou. Mine's Joe, but I'm busy right now. I want Graham to see what a fine house painter you are. She appreciates good house painting. Maybe you can paint our cat back home. You're painting? Redecorating. It's a formal reception for Princess Anne. Redecorating. Hmm. That must come to a pretty penny. Formal reception. Hmm. Perhaps we should talk to the study. I think we'd better. Redecorating. Hmm. Formal reception. Now you stay right here, Joe, and I'll go fetch Graham. Where are you from, Cindy Lou? All the way from Happy Hollow. You said Mr. Seabury is a relative? We's kissing cousins. Graham, Graham, come and meet Joe. Wait here, please. Who did you say you were? This is Countess Hepburn, lady in waiting for Princess Anne. I don't suppose she gives autographs. Better not let Mrs. Seabury see you in here. Right. This is Taylor. He's a tailor? No, I'm a security man. The Countess and I always come ahead when there's a reception for the princess. I'll get Mrs. Seabury and her dog. I don't suppose we'll have any trouble securing the place. I'll leave that entirely up to you, Taylor, as always. Zoom! 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 Wow, right where you are! Howdy! Americans have such an amusing way of expressing themselves. Why? Do you reside here? I'm from Happy Hollow. And where's that? In the hills. How quaint. Can't stop and chatter. Gotta go find a place to hide my plane. Zoom, zoom, zoom! I find Americans quite eccentric. Quite. Ah, oh, come on! You ain't got a pull. You'll aggravate my rheumatism. See what I mean? Indeed I do. What's that the way? I suppose it's a fashion statement. A great pleasure to meet you. I'm Countess Hepburn. <laughs> What's she holding out her hand for? Maybe she wants some spare change. <laughs> this is the security man in charge of the princess's safety. Name's Taylor. We always come on ahead to smooth out any problems. Why well, that night? I'm obliged. I make sure there's no um, suspicious characters lurking in the shrubbery. Gosh! You folks sure do talk funny. What elementary school did you go to? I beg your pardon? Hush up, Cindy Lou. Maybe they didn't graduate. <laughs> Are you sure that we have the correct address? How would you folks like to stay for supper? We could possibly. Graham's cooking up a polka casserole. Nasty. Out! Out! Graham's invited these funny talking folks over for supper. Out! I figure there's enough to go around if you're not water the skunk. Get out! <laughs> I'm really neighbors. Please forgive them. Mrs. Charles Seabury. That's a relief. I'm Countess Hepburn, lady in waiting for Princess 
song. I know. I've seen your picture in the Better magazines. This is Taylor. Security for Princess Anne. I've always had security personnel. Can't have enough security. The world is full of odd characters went on mission. It is my job to see that no harm comes to the princess. I assure you the princess will be safe in my home. Polly Mansion is the bastion of calm and refinement. The princess will shake hands with each guest if you plot well to the exchange. The princess will dine on a single small sandwich and one cup of non-carbonated punch. We'll be serving finger sandwiches. And no that the princess doesn't like sweets. No sweets. I'll remember that. I'll want to check the guest list. Miss Claypool has it. I'll make sure it gets to you. Is this where the reception will be held? <laughs> Good gracious, no. It'll be in the blue room. And where's that? In there. You do understand the princess will not be able to stay long. She has a grueling schedule and she must stick to it. We time everything down to the split second. I understand. Let me show you the blue room. I'm having it redecorated. Miss Seabury. Not now, Margaret. You've got to get that woman out of my kitchen. We'll discuss this another time. She's chopping up wood. Later, Margaret. I warn you, Miss Seabury, either she goes or I go. Full cat castle, indeed.
What are you doing? <laughs> Gotta limber up for the chase. Chase? <laughs> One, two, three. I think they mean it. Four, five, six. Let's get out of here. Seven, eight. <laughs> Even the hound dogs in it. 
And I was holding Oscar, my prize bullfrog. And he's got a big smile on his face. Never seen a frog smile before. But since you'll be staying, we stay. stay. Yes. At least till Cousin Shakery gets hired. I reckon we'll see him at the reception. Actually, I spoke with him this evening, and he doesn't think he'll make the reception. Oh. But he told me to give you his love, Graham. Chicory always was a sweet boy. Even as a youngin' back in Happy Hollow, he used to like to play in the mud puddles. Mud puddles, yes. Since you'll be staying, I asked Jessica Montgomery to stop by tomorrow to give you a few lessons on how to behave. Is she a teacher? She runs a charm school. Did you hear that, Bubba? Oh, he's going to charm school. Oh, he's going to charm school. <laughs> <laughs> Reinhardt, she's fond of jewelry. No one else? No one. 
Someone did come into the room. That's right, one of the workmen. Does he have a name? His name is Joe. He's finishing up the guru. Do you want me to go get him? I'll get him in time. I like to poke around my own. Surely you don't suspect it was someone in this house. The name's Philip, not Shirley. I'm always reminded of people of that. I'd like to have another look at that wall safe. Shirley, sorry. This way. I don't believe. So you say this Mrs. Rhinelover likes jewelry? Rhine Harbor. When she saw the Star of Ice, and she said, what I wouldn't give to have it. What I wouldn't give to have it. Now we're getting somewhere. Is Mr. Bogart making any progress? I don't know. How is Mrs. Seabury? She hasn't left her room all day. Poor thing. This will look lovely for tomorrow. Fresh from the greenhouse. Ah. Love you. I don't understand why Mrs. Seabury told you the Hollies were caterers. Mm -hmm. I suspect she doesn't want us to know they're in-laws. I think they're nice, even if they are odd. Well, Mr. Bubba had a fit this morning. Why's that? Seems he's lost Oscar. Oscar? His prize frog. Careful where you step. <laughs>
I'm always hungry. As long as it's not bologna. <laughs> you don't like bologna. That's all I do, county jail.
We thought you was Miss Montgomery from Montgomery School of Charm. This is going to be more difficult than I thought. Please pay careful attention. I'll pretend to be the princess. When I extend my hand, you will politely take it. Don't squeeze. I'll start with you, Alice. So nice to meet you. 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 How do we charm school? I got me a nice little cabin back in Happy Hollow, and I'll be mighty glad if you stop by for a visit. No! You were not listening. You politely take the extended hand and you say nothing. Mrs. Seabury was explicit on that point. <laughs> If in the princess is nice to me, I reckon it's only proper that I be nice back. That's right. That's right. It's fitting. Only proper. Quiet. You will say nothing to the princess, understood? Understood. And you will wear your best clothes. Golly, Miss Montgomery, we's wearing our best clothes. <laughs> I made them myself. Ain't nobody in Happy Hollow can make fancy clothes like Graham. We'll deal with your own garments later. For now, let us practice the curtsy. When the princess enters the blue room and passes you by, you will give what is called a court curtsy. Watch me as I demonstrate. Golly! Ain't that something? <laughs> Let's start with you, Alice. Yes, ma'am. How was that? Work on it. Your turn. Practice, practice, practice. Yes, ma'am. Let's see what you can do. One be good for my rheumatism. You must try. All right. <laughs>
finger sandwiches. Grandma always threw the other ones in the trash. I know, I know. It's been a child. I'll make amends. I'm just happy that you're back. I didn't say I was staying. The floor looks beautiful, Miss Seabury. I know. You seem nervous. I am. Don't be. The reception will go splendidly. That's what everyone keeps saying. We did a nice job with the blue room, if I do say so myself. Aren't you the foreman? Yes, that's right, Miss Seabury. Joe. What is he doing at the reception? I thought it'd be wise in case there is an accident. Accident? Accident? For example, a portrait might fall? What a terrible thought! That's right, I could have a backup in less than half a minute. I guess Cindy Lou will be at the reception. Uh, er, I can see you have a lot on your mind. We won't bother you any further. I'd appreciate that. I think we're getting somewhere with the jewelry heist. Oh, mustn't worry about that now. It's too distressing. I'm putting all my bets on that Mrs. Reinliff, though. Don't be absurd. Miss Reinhardt is an upstanding citizen. I understand she's got a taste for sparkles. That's not unusual. What are you wearing? What do I always wear? My raincoat and hat. You can't wear that to the reception. It's not even raining outside. <coughs> what will the princess think? She won't even know I'm there. I usually hide behind the potted plant. Never heard of anything so absurd. Potted plant. Don't work up a sweat. I know my job. Trust me. What choice do I have? At any moment, the princess will be entering through the garden. Elegant, cool, and serene. Pizza and delivery. Red hot pizza. Wait, what? That don't sound like a princess. No, it doesn't. I know I'm a little late. Better late than never. That's my motto. Hey, kid, who are you? Who do you think? I'm your friendly neighborhood pizza delivery man. No one in this house ordered pizza. That'd be unthinkable. This. Four, four zero seven Whitley Heights. Yeah. And I'm in the right place. Preposterous. How'd you get through the garden? Walk through. So much for security. <laughs> Who gets the pizza? Get it while it's hot. I'm telling you, there's been a mistake. Now please leave. Now without the delivery, maybe a black mark on my record. Bogart, do something. Let's go, Bozo. Hey, hey, hands off! I bruise easy. Bogart, think of the princess. Take him out the back way. You can't do this. Watch. I've got rights. Not this house. He's a delivery man. What's next? Momsy, show the class. Did you do it? Yes, Momsy. I did just what you said. I locked them in their rooms. Safe at last. Even if they yell, no one will hear them. Their rooms are so far away. I don't know what Daddy will say when he finds out. Mustn't worry about that now. You'll never guess who was just here a moment ago. A pizza delivery man. Have you ever heard of anything so absurd? I ordered that pizza, Momsy. You? You know I'm always hungry. Charlotte, how could you? A pizza? Is everyone here? Almost. Go in and mingle. Yes, Mom. Mrs. Seabury. Mrs. Seabury. Mrs. Seabury. Yeah. Ladies, you're late. The invitation specifically said to be here before the princess. Is she here yet? Any moment. We would have been here sooner, but we had car trouble. Such a nuisance. My chauffeur's name is a carburetor. He always says that. Why don't you get a new chauffeur? Or a new car? Or a new carburetor? Well, you've done it. A social triumph. You catch royalty when no one else could. I salute you. You're too kind. I've always suspected I have royal blood. My dear, you're not wearing it. Where is it? Uh, where is what, Miss Ryan Harbor? The Star of Iceland? Uh, Everyone is so anxious to see it. You so rarely wear it. I want a real close look. So do I. The closer, the better. She's here, the princess! Ooh, the ladies, hurry into the blue room. Royalty has come to Whitley Heights. Isn't this thrilling? Isn't this wonderful? Isn't this great? I'd be delighted. 
Please don't. I'd like to surprise her. That's what you want, sir. That is what I want. I wonder who locked them doors. <laughs> I don't think them doors was locked, Graham. Nobody do a thing like that. I reckon they was all swelled up from the damp. Lucky Bubba was able to knock him down. That's a mighty strong one, it has to be. Maybe the princess would like to see me waddle like an alligator. <laughs> Everybody brush yourself and remember everything Ms. Montgomery done told us. Ladies curtsy and gentlemen nod. I'm wondering if and Joe will be at the party. He sure is a nice fella. Maybe the princess would like to see my prize bullfrog. <laughs> Hush your dog, that old bullfrog! Hi, boys. Look who it is, Bubba. <laughs> Those are the beautiful people we told you about, Graham. Always a pleasure to meet beautiful people. What names do you got? I'm Molly. Sam. Andy. How Howdy. Howdy. Glad you can make it. Free food, right? All you can stuff. Sounds good to me. What are we waiting for? <laughs> Everybody gets a payout at the party. That's for sure, Clem. Let's all go shell that princess gal. We got good manners. <laughs> Which come naturally. Stop! <laughs>
back in Miss Montgomery wouldn't be proud of what we've done here today, but us Hylas, we just got carried away. If you did have a cabin in the hills, I'd be inclined to visit. Stop by any time! I'll cook you up a delicious pie of roadkill. Delightful. Princess, time. I must insist. Yes, Taylor, I'm ready. Thank you again, Mrs. Sebas. I shall never forget this reception. It was divine. <laughs> Is that a frog?
Sure they are. Uh, no. Appreciate them. If we could give them a round of applause. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Just one last note. If you have a cell phone, if you could turn it off or put it on vibrate, I would appreciate that. We are recording today's session. Thank you so much for coming. Enjoy the play.
think much less concentrate with all of that noise. Did you say something, Mrs. Seabury? That noise? It's giving me a headache. Please ask them to stop. Yes, Mrs. Seabury. I have been patient, but there are limits. Charlotte, it sounds conceited. We don't want to give Miss Reed the wrong impression. 
We're proud of our lineage, not conceited. If you say so, Momsy. I think I'll have a cup of tea and go over my notes. Miss Reeve. Yes, Mrs. Seabury. How many copies should I have printed? That's up to the individual family. Usually it's three to five hundred copies. Oh, that won't nearly be enough. Five thousand at least. Five thousand. What do you think, Charlotte? Sounds reasonable. I want to give a copy to every girl in my sorority, nationwide. And I want to give copies to all my friends, acquaintances, and admirers, and copies to all the leading universities, senators, and congressmen. You're paying for it, Mrs. Seabury. <laughs> What's money to me? It might as well be confetti. Daddy says you spent too much money. What do businessmen know about money? By the way, Precious, must you be so familiar with the hired help? You call Miss Reed Carroll and Miss Fontaine Morris. It isn't dignified. Remember who you are. You are a Seabury. Never forget that. Whatever you say, Momsy. Where's my briefcase, Miss Claypool? I have it right here, sir, and your hat. I'm leaving you in charge of everything. Charles. Yes, sir. Charles. I'll only be gone for a few days. Yes, sir. Charles. If those people from the Internal Revenue Service show up, try to put them off. Yes, sir. Charles. Why are you yelling, Josephine? It's the only way I can get your attention. Don't, Sol. I've got a lot on my mind. What about my mind? What about your mind? Momsy means the reception. <coughs> reception? What reception? What reception? Have you lost your senses? Your wife needs a reception for Princess Anne. I'll be back in plenty of time. You'd better be, otherwise I'll never forgive you. You know I hate receptions. That isn't the point. The blue room will look splendid. The redecoration may cost a fortune, but it will be worth every penny. I've told you before, Josephine, you spend too much money. A woman in my social position has to. It's expected. Momsy says we should have 5,000 copies of the family history printed. 5,000? Another fortune. Money doesn't grow on trees. It does if you have a money tree. I have no money tree. Oh, don't talk rubbish, Charles. And you don't look well. You haven't looked well for some time. Anything wrong? There's nothing the matter with me. Why are you wearing a top coat, Daddy? It's a lovely day outside. It won't be in Canada. Canada? I thought you were going to Chicago. Canada. Toronto. The limo's outside, sir. You don't want to miss your flight. Yes, yes. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, Daddy. Charles, aren't you forgetting something? <laughs> your briefcase, sir. Don't want to forget that. <laughs> Charles, that isn't what I meant. What did you mean? Kiss, kiss. Oh, for goodness sakes. Here, catch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and there is one thing I forgot. You remember my relatives from the hills, the Hollies? Distant relatives, but not distant enough. You made us visit them last year when we drove across country. It was a horrible experience, Daddy. They were so uncoop, so rustic, so uncivilized. Which is another way of saying they're down to earth. I put the whole experience out of my mind. <coughs> They're nice people. They're coming for a visit. <laughs> Read them the postcard, Miss Claypool. The printing's too small for me without my glasses. Yes, sir. It says I've mailed from some place called Happy Hollow. Happy Hollow. I thought I'd never hear the name of that miserable hamlet again. They didn't even have television in Happy Hollow. Dear Cousin Chicory. Chicory, how humiliating. They call me Chicory. Howdy, we reckon you didn't expect to hear from us. Remember you said if and we'd ever got to the big city, we should give you a kinfolk visit. Kinfolk? Appalling. What do they mean by visit? Don't be surprised if in one of these days we drop in for a nice long stay. A cook of a delicious pot of roadkill. Roadkill? How lonesome. I think I'm going to be sick on the carpet. Don't you dare, Charlotte. It's signed Graham Holly. Graham. Yes, Graham. Graham Holly. They can't be serious about a visit. What would the neighbors say? We'd have to close up the house. I wouldn't worry about it. The hallways are as poor as church place. They probably couldn't even afford a bus ticket. <laughs> then why did they send that wretched postcard? Graham's getting on in years. I suspect this is her way of keeping in touch. I'd appreciate it, Miss Claypool, if you didn't mention that tattered postcard to anyone. They might misunderstand. I won't say a word to anyone. Talk about a black sheep. Blah, blah, blah. That's not amusing, Charlotte. Sorry, Daddy. <coughs> the limo's outside, so you must hurry. He'll be right there. Goodbye, Charlotte. Goodbye, Daddy. Goodbye, Josephine. Goodbye, Chicory. Goodbye, Miss Claypool. Goodbye, sir. Lots of luck in Canada. Thanks. I'll need it. If you'll excuse me. Miss Claypool, 
Yes, Mrs. Seabury? That postcard destroyed. You don't want to keep it? We'd sooner keep a dead possum in the house. <laughs> this is the limit. The absolute limit. Remember that boy who got his exercise by pretending he was an alligator? What was his name? Bubba. And his brother? Clem. And Graham Holly's granddaughter? It was Cindy Lou, wasn't it? Yes. And don't forget that orphan girl that kept hiding in strange places. Alice. It's ghastly. We remember too much. It was a grotesque experience. What if Miss Reed found out about the Hollies? She must never find out about the Hollies. As far as we're concerned, the Hollies of Happy Hollow don't exist. Mum's the word. Yes, Mum. We're ready to paint the ceiling. Miss Fontaine wants you to take a look. Hello, Miss Charlotte. Hello, Joe. Tell Miss Fontaine I'll be along shortly. You're the boss. Charlotte, that is a perfect example of what I don't want you to do. You call that workman Joe. That's his name. His name doesn't matter. Sorry, Mamsie. Miss Siegfried Reinhaber the third. I wonder what she wants. Oh, she might hear you. Miss Reinhaber, a delightful surprise. Tea, Lester. Yes, Mrs. Perry. I just got back into town from South America and found your invitation to tea with Princess Anne waiting for me. You scored the social coup of the season. I'm possibly pused with admiration. Hello, Charlotte. Hello, Mrs. Ryan Harbour. <laughs> a tennis racket. How do you say? Sorry. I must know how you met the princess. We've been friends for years. Aren't you a sly vixen? Never saying a word. I still have to ask you, my dear. Ask me what? Will you be wearing it? It. Come, come. Don't play games with me. Your famous jewel, the Star of Iceland. Oh. I'll be wearing it. How thrilling. The Star of Iceland and Princess Anne? And Momsie's having the Blue Room completely redecorated. The Star of Iceland and Princess Anne and the Blue Room completely redecorated? Takes one's breath away. You know, Josephine, I've never seen the Star of Iceland. I suppose it would be too much to ask. A little peek. You know I love jewels. I want to ask you a question about Governor Seabury. Sorry, didn't mean to intrude. Do stay, Miss Reed. This might interest you. Miss Claypool! This is Miss Reed. She's writing our family history. Fabulous. Monty's going to show Mrs. Reinharber the Star of Iceland. I didn't expect to see it until the reception. Yes, Mrs. Seabury? I want to show Miss Reinharber and Miss Reed the Star of Iceland. Go get it from the wall safe at once. <coughs> Goodness, you mean to say that a woman has a combination of your safe? I trust my husband's secretary implicitly. She's indispensable. But a stone of that word? It's heavily insured. But it's irreplaceable. Pish posh. Perhaps you'll write my family history someday, Miss Reed. Writing family history is my job. I'd be delighted to. I suspect I have royal blood. From where? From wherever such blood comes from. <laughs> Beg pardon, Mrs. Seabury. Yes, Lester, what is it? The tea. English breakfast or orange picot? Picot. Yes, Mrs. Seabury. Here it is, Mrs. Seabury. Ladies, there's not another stone like it in the world, the Star of Iceland. Brilliant. It hurts my eyes to look. What I wouldn't give to have it. Like burning ice. Wow, that's some rock. What are you doing in here? Maybe I exchange this ladder for one in the garden. You don't have to come through here to do that. Sorry. I should hope so. <coughs> Help these days is impossible. Joe didn't mean any harm. Charlotte, remember who you are. Sorry, Mumsy. How many carrots? You mean for the reception? Speak to the cook. I mean the star of Iceland, the unit weight. Oh, Miss Claypool can fill you in on the minor details. I'd hardly call the unit weight of the star of Iceland a minor detail. I'm afraid we're out of orange because. Then serve English breakfast. Yes, Mrs. Seabury. Oh, ever since we received news of Princess Anne's trip to Los Angeles, this mansion has gone to sea. I am so embarrassed, I don't know how to apologize. There's no need to apologize. I don't like tea anyway. It upsets my stomach. <coughs> the ceiling, Miss Seabury. <coughs> I've forgotten about the ceiling. Coming, Miss Fontaine. Thank you, Mrs. Miss Seabury. Yes, Victoria, what is it? There are some strange-looking people out the door. Strange-looking people? We don't know any strange-looking people. They say they're expected. Expected? Oh no. It couldn't be.
me along my prize frog, you want to see it? My name be Alice, but it's yours. Mighty nice to meet you. You be kidful? Howdy, <laughs> dinner lady. Pleased to meet you. Ain't nobody going hungry tonight than when I broke for supper all the way from Happy Hollow. She is served. Bullfrogs, I dote some of them bullfrogs. 
Before you go, clamps in. Toss me that old polecat. I'll make a casserole. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Charlotte, child, where's the stove? I'll show you. I hope you got plenty of wood for the fire. I wouldn't know about that. What are you waiting for, Bubba? Ready when you are, Clam. What's in there, Cousin Josephine? Why is all them books working? It's the largest sitting room in the mansion. I'm having it redecorated at great expense. Could I have a looky? If you wish, but try to stay out of the way. The workmen are very busy. Oh, they won't know I'm there. But I will. You rang, Mrs. Seabury? Yes, we'll be having some people stay over for a while. I think the rooms in the east wing under the eaves will do. Those rooms aren't fit for guests, Mrs. Seabury. The wallpaper is starting to peel. Well, they're <coughs> not guests exactly. Not guests. They're, they're, they're caterers. Yes, that's what they are, caterers. My husband hired them. For the reception. Yes, they've traveled a long way. <coughs> Go see who it is, Lester. Yes, Mrs. Seabury. Will you send these invoices, Mrs. Seabury? Later, later. Uh, what hotel was my husband staying at in Toronto? The Prince William. Zoom! 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 We're going down! Who was that? I didn't see anyone. The ceiling, Mrs. Seabury. I don't want to go on any further without your approval. Coming, Miss Fontaine. Some space. 
fair change. <laughs> this is the security man in charge of the princess's safety. Name's Taylor. We always come on ahead to smooth out any problems. Ain't that nice? I'm obliged. I make sure there's no suspicious characters lurking in the shrubbery. Gosh, you folks sure do talk funny. What elementary school did you go to? <laughs> I beg your pardon? Hush up, Cindy Lou. Maybe they didn't graduate. <laughs> Are you sure we have the correct address? How would you folks like to stay for supper? We couldn't possibly. Graham's cooking up a polecat casserole. Let's see. Out! Out! Graham's invited these funny talking folks over for supper. Out! I'll figure there's enough to go around. Out! If and I'll water the skillet. <laughs> Unruly neighbors, please forgive them. Mrs. Charles Seaver, that's <laughs> I'm Countess Hepburn, lady in waiting to come to I know, I've seen your pictures in the better magazines. This is Taylor, security for the princess. I've already had security personnel. Can't have enough security. All is full of odd characters bent on mischief. It is my job to see that no harm comes to the princess. I assure you, the princess will be safe in my home. Polly Mansion is a bastion of calm and refinement. The princess will shake hands with each guest, a few polite words will be exchanged. The princess will dine on a single small sandwich and one cup of non carbonated punch. We'll be having finger sandwiches. Uh, notice that the princess doesn't like sweets. No sweets. I'll remember that. I'll want to check the guest list. My husband's secretary has it. I'll be sure it gets to you. Is this where the reception will be held? Good gracious, no. It will be in the blue room. <coughs> and where's that? In there. You do understand. The princess will not be able to stay long. She has a grueling schedule and she must stick to it. I quite understand. We tap everything down to the last second. Yes. Um, the blue room. I'll show you. Miss Seabury. Not now, Margaret. You've got to get that woman out of my kitchen. We'll discuss this another time. You know she's cooking on my electric stove? Later, Margaret. I won't stand for someone coming into my kitchen, rearranging all my pots and pans. She's chopping up wood. It's obviously a slight misunderstanding. I warned you, Miss Seabury. Either she goes or I go. Whole cat casserole, indeed. <laughs> it's so hard to be good servants these days. <coughs> Quats. Always quarreling about something. Not, I think it was the cook. Yes, Margaret. I don't know what I'd do without her. She's an absolute genius with food. She's planned a superb menu for the reception. The blue room. Aren't they the funniest boys you've ever seen? I don't know. I thought the one with the beard was kind of cute. They both had beards. Ask her to find the best <laughs> girl hunting. Imagine squirrel hunting? I wonder what's become of Charlotte. Charlotte! Charlotte doesn't have time for tennis with friends anymore. She's too busy telling everyone about the princess. You have to admit, everyone's talking about the princess. Still, I don't see why she has to rub it in. Howdy! Look, buddy, it's those strange boys. They must have followed us. It's like a tennis match. Can't either of you boys say anything? Howdy! We mean besides howdy? Perhaps if we introduce ourselves. I'm Janie of Pencil, and this is my good friend, Wendy Booster Spangle. We are sorority sisters of Charlotte's. Howdy, okay. It's <laughs> hopeless. I'll be Clem, and this be my brother, Bubba. They do have names. I reckon we's kin. Kin? Relatives. Whatever gave you that idea? You said you were Charlotte's sisters. Sorority sisters? What's that, but Sorority. Oh, that's the place to send you if and you're sore all over. Oh. <laughs> uh, you guys like to see my brother do his imitation of an alligator? An alligator? He's real good at it. Just watch. <laughs> Here comes the alligator. Here comes the alligator. Whoa, whoa, whoa.
jump the frogs real good. Some other time. Whatever you say. So what are you boys doing in Los Angeles? We's looking for wives. Wives? We don't like the gals back in Happy Hollow. Why not? On account of they don't like us. <laughs> I reckon that's us. It's you gals. Chuck. Chuck? Chuck? You know, spoke fur. Spoke fur? Back in Happy Hollow, a man gives a gal a head start. What are you going on about? We count to ten, and we chase them. Then what? If and we catch them, that means we're engaged. Uh, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. You sure is party, Miss Bunny. You sure is pretty, Mr. Janey. <laughs> what are you doing? Got to limber up for the chase. Three. One, two, three. I think they need it. Four, five, six. Howdy, boys. Where have you been? Not hungry. We didn't find 
Mine doesn't work bring it back, though. Did here now? Who know? Just like back home in Happy Hollow. Still want to meet some of the beautiful people in Los Angeles. I reckon you'll meet them at the reception the day after tomorrow. Even if they is cannibals. Cannibals? Graham says they eat fingers. My, my, I ain't never met me a cannibal a foe. I thought I heard voices. We've been not heard. Imagine. What you doing in the blue room this time of night, Cud Josephine? Making sure everything is in its place, especially the family portraits. Is we up there on that wall? There's no room. You know, I got a nice snapshot of the whole family back in Abbey Hollow. Even the hound dog's in it. Now he's holding Oscar, my prized bullfrog, and he's got a big smile on his face. Never seen a frog smile before. Since you're staying... We stay! Yes. At least till Cousin Chickory gets hired. I reckon we'll see him at the reception. Actually, I just spoke with him this evening, and he doesn't think he'll make the reception. Oh. But he told me to give you his love, Graham. Chickory always was a sweet boy. Even as a youngin' back in Happy Hollow, he used to like to play in the mud puddles. Mud puddles, yes. Since you're staying, I asked Jessica Montgomery to stop by tomorrow and give you some lessons on how to behave. Is she a teacher? She runs a charm school. Did you hear that, Bella? We's going to charm school. <laughs> We's going to charm school. <laughs> Thief. How could I? 
I didn't recognize his voice either. He wore a ski mask. He forced me to open the wall safe. He had a gun. I was terrified. How horrible. Only you and Mr. Seabury had the combination, right? Yes. Mrs. Seabury never paid attention to minor detail like the safe's combination. You say earlier in the day you took the star of ice and out from the safe and showed it to a few people. At Mrs. Seabury's request. Who was in the room? I was. So was I. And Charlotte. And? Mrs. Reinharber. She's fond of jewelry. No one else? No one. Someone did come into the room. That's right. One of the workmen. Does he have a name? His name is Joe. He's finishing up in the blue room. Do you want me to go get him? I'll get him in time. I like to poke around on my own. Surely you don't suspect there was someone in this house. Name's Philip, not Shirley. I'm always reminding people of that. <laughs> I'd like to have another look at that one all safe. Shirley, sorry. This way. I know the way. So you say this Mrs. Rhinelover likes jewelry? Rhine Harbor. When she saw the Star of Ice, then she said, What I wouldn't give to have it. What I wouldn't give to have it. Hmm. Now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> Is Mr. Bogart making any progress? I don't know. How is Mrs. Seabury? She hasn't left her room all day. Poor thing. This will look lovely for tomorrow. Fresh from the greenhouse. Let me help you. I don't understand why Mrs. Seabury children the mothers were here. I suspect she doesn't want us to know they're in-laws. I think they're nice, even if they are odd. Mr. Bubba had a fit this morning. Why's that? Seems he's lost Oscar. Oscar? His prize bowl. Before you step. I'm back. Margaret. I decided I couldn't leave Miss Seabury in this time porch. Now the prince is coming. Why didn't you use the servant's entrance? If I leave the front door, I come back by the front door. I suppose my grandma only your fingers still in my kitchen. Last time I looked. She took the finger sandwiches from the freezer and threw them out. Ugh. I'm looking for Carol Reed. Your name, sir? Papa. Ah, yes. Papa. You'll be taking pictures, Mom. That's right. Can you really see this blue room I keep hearing about? <coughs> I'll see if Miss Reed is available. You do that. <coughs> so tomorrow's the big day. <coughs> Sleep better on the sidewalk. It's good for your health. 
Did you hear that, Bubba? It's good for your health. Wait till I tell Graham. She'll want to try it. Who's <laughs> Graham? Our granny. Does she have any credit cards? More than she can carry. We like the beer sometimes. Glam, we've been plum rude. We ought to give these nice folks something to eat. It's only never left. That's a good idea. I haven't eaten all day. The dumpster was locked. I'm always hungry. As long as it's not baloney. <laughs> you don't like baloney? So they give you a county jail. Shh. I know. Why don't we have tea? Tea? Yeah. You give that bell cord over there, Tut. And a man in a clean shirt comes out with your cookies and cake and all sorts of stuff. Go on, little. I'd go for some cake. I'd go for some cookies. I'd go for some credit cards. You guys come back tomorrow, and there'll be all sorts of savers. Tomorrow is a special day. What's so special about it? We's having a party, and you's all being nice. I like parties. I ain't got anything else to do. I'll ask my secretary to check my schedule. Is it even gonna be a princess? Princess? Uh-huh, a princess. Sure, sure. You rang. Uh, who are these people? Introduce yourselves. I'm Molly. Sammy. Andy. Are these what you call the beautiful people? <laughs> <laughs> beautiful people? They're bums. We have to have the sofa reupholster. Watch. Who are you calling a bum? I'll have you know, I've got friends at City Hall. I suggest you go visit them. <laughs> we want some tea. If you're not out of this house in ten seconds, I'm calling the police. What would Mrs. Seabury say? Out. 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 I knew it wouldn't last. Not even one credit card. Credit card? <laughs> we can get spare change. Out. <laughs> Bye for now. Awful nice meeting you. Don't forget the party tomorrow. <laughs> the very idea. Scandalous. I sure is sorry Graham and Cindy Lou didn't get to meet some of them beautiful people. Don't worry, Clem. There'll be plenty of time tomorrow. Gentlemen, gentlemen, those individuals are not the sort of friends you should be making. I'm only glad Mrs. Seabury didn't see them. Where is Cousin Josephine? She's resting. I reckon him and her necklace took his tuckered her out. Small wonder. We would have caught that varmint if and he didn't run so good. <laughs> zoom, zoom, zoom. Thank <laughs> you. 
difficult than I thought. Please pay careful attention. I'll pretend to be the princess. When I extend my hand, you will politely take it. Don't squeeze. I'll start with you, Alice. So nice to meet you. 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 How do you, princess? I got me a nice little cabin back in that palace, and I'll be mighty inclined if you stop by for a visit. No, you were not listening. You politely take the extended hand, and you say nothing. Mrs. Seabury was explicit on that point. <laughs> Missy 
see, Barry. I want you to know I was up all night making those finger sandwiches. Graham Holly threw the other ones in the trash. I know, I know. It's been a trial. I'll make amends. I'm just happy that you've come back. I didn't say I was staying. Blue room looks beautiful, Miss Seabury. Yes, yes. You seem nervous. I am nervous. Don't be. The reception will go splendidly. That's what everyone keeps saying. We did a nice job with the blue room, if I say so myself. Aren't you the foreman? Yes, that's right, Miss Seabury. Joe. What is he doing at the reception? I thought it'd be wise in case there is an accident. Accident? An accident? <coughs> For example, a portrait might fall? What a terrible thought! That's right, I could have that portrait back up in less than half a minute. I guess Cindy Lou will be at the reception. Uh, er, I can see you have a lot on your mind. We won't bother you any further. I think we're getting somewhere with the jewelry heist. I mustn't think about that now. It's too distressing. I'm putting all my bets on that Mrs. Ryan liver. Don't be absurd. Miss Ryan Harper is an upstanding citizen. I understand she's got a taste for sparkles. That's not unusual. What are you wearing? What do I always wear? My raincoat and hat. It's not even raining outside. What will the princess say? She won't even know I'm there. I usually hide behind a potted plant. Never heard of anything so absurd. Potted plants. Don't work up a sweat. I know my job. Trust me. I don't have any other option. At any moment, the princess will be entering through the gardens, elegant, cool, and serene. Pizza delivery, red hot pizza! Wait, what? That don't sound like a princess. No, it doesn't. <coughs> I know I'm a little late, and I like the pepper. That's my motto. Hey, kid, who are you? Who do you think? I'm your friendly neighborhood pizza delivery man. Don't be dumb. No one in this house has ordered any pizza. Now, please leave. Yeah. Preposterous! How did you get through the gardens? Walk us through. So much for security. <coughs> Who gets the pizza? The wall's hot. I'm telling you, there's been a mistake. Leave. Now without delivery, it'd be a block more from my record. Bogart, do something. Let's go, Bozo. Hey, hey, hands off. I bruise you. Tough. Bogart, think of the princess. Take him off the back way. You can't do this. What? I've got rights. Not in this house. Pizza delivery man. What's next? Momsy? Yes, Charlotte? Did you do it? Yes, Momsy. I did just what you said. I locked them in their rooms. Safe at last. Even if they yell, no one will hear them. Their rooms are so far away. I don't know what Daddy will say when he finds out. Mustn't worry about that now. You'll never guess who was just here a moment ago. A pizza delivery man. Have you ever heard of such a thing? I ordered that pizza, Mamsie. You? You know I'm always hungry. Charlotte, how could you? Is everyone here? Almost. Go in and mingle. Yes, Mamsie. Hi, Mrs. Seabury. Hi, Mrs. Seabury. Ladies, you're late. The invitation specifically said to be here before the princess. Is she here yet? Any moment. We would have been here sooner, but we had car trouble. Such a nuisance. My chauffeur said it was a carburetor. He always says that. Why don't you get a new chauffeur or a new car? Or a new carburetor. Well, you've done it. A social triumph. You catch your royalty when no one else could. I salute you. You're too kind. I've always suspected I have royal blood. My dear, you're not wearing it. Where is it? Where is what, Miss Reinharper? The star of Iceland? Everyone is so anxious to see it. You so rarely wear it. I want a real close look. So do I. The closer, the better. She's here, the princess! Oh, Ladies, <laughs> hurry into the blue room! You'll meet the princess any moment. Royalty has come to Whitley Heights! Isn't this thrilling? Isn't this wonderful? Isn't this grand? No, please. 
Please don't. I don't like it to be a surprise. That's what you want, sir. That is what I want. I wonder who locked them doors. I don't think them doors was locked, Graham. Nobody knew a thing like that. I reckon they was all swelled up from the damp. Lucky Bubba was able to knock them down. I was mighty strong when I has to be. Maybe the princess would like to uh, see me waddle like an alligator. Y'all brush yourselves and remember everything Miss Montgomery Dunn taught us. Ladies curtsy and gentlemen nod. I'm wondering if and Joe will be at the party. He sure is a nice fella. Maybe the princess would like to see my prize bullfrog. Hush up about that old bullfrog. Hi, boys. Look who's here, Bubba. There was the beautiful people we told you about, Graham. Always a pleasure to meet beautiful people. What names you got? I'm Molly. Sammy. Andy. How do you? Howdy. Glad you can make it. Free food, right? All you can stuff. Sounds good to me. What are we waiting for? Everybody gets a pig out at the party. That's for sure, Clem. Let's go show that princess gal we got good miners. Which come naturally. I don't care what anyone says. I'm supposed to deliver a pizza to this address, and I'm delivering. Who gets the pepperoni with extra cheese? <laughs> Carried away. 
If you did have a cabin in the hills, I'd be inclined to visit. You stop by any time. I'll cook you up a delicious pot of roadkill. Delightful. Princess, the time. I must insist. Yes, Taylor, I'm ready. Thank you again, Mrs. Sebas. I shall never forget this reception. It was divine. Is that a frog? Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
Jason. I'll let you.